section 2.6 characteristics of quadratic functions for math 3. What type of symmetry does the graph of f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k have and how can you describe the symmetry? So this, it should be obvious that this is a, a quadratic in vertex form so uh, with a vertex of h comma k um, and we're going to look at some examples to show you how to graph and kind of consider uh, quadratics. So you already should be familiar with the shape. It's a parabola. Um, it's symmetric. So there's an X of symmetry uh, where it's, it essentially, it goes to the vertex, right? So X equals H is the X of symmetry. Um, and basically just cuts it in half. Um, so I wanted to start off in the textbook because we have this good example um, using symmetry to graph quadratic functions. So graph f of x equals negative 2 times x plus 3 squared uh, plus 4. Label the vertex and x of symmetry. So you should already know um, from our transformations that this is uh, original or no, uh, a quadratic that's translated to the left 3 units and up 4. So we go to the left 3 units and up 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and so this is your vertex, negative 3, 4, negative 3, 4, and A is negative 2. So in standard form, uh, that's when it's AX squared plus BX plus C. Then what you could do is, well, sorry, let me talk about graphing first. So you go ahead and go to the vertex, uh, negative 3, 4, and draw the axis of symmetry, X equals negative 3. Evaluate the function for two values of x. So you could just go uh, to the left two points. So from negative 3 to negative, uh, sorry, negative 2 and then negative 1. They went to the right two points, my bad. Um, and then you plug them in. So you plug in negative 2, you get 2. So negative 2, 2. And then you plug in negative 1, and you get negative 4. So you're at negative 2, 2 and negative 1, 4. And using the fact that it's um, symmetric, then you just go to the other side. So instead of going to the right one to get negative 2, 2, then you just go to the left one. So you get negative 4, 2. And then instead of going to the right by 2, so from negative 3 to negative 1, uh, we got negative 1, negative 4. Then uh, you could go to the left twice and go, okay, well, since I know this is going to be <clears throat> negative 4, then on this side, it will also be negative 4 because that's how symmetry works. Okay, um, now that we've talked about uh, vertex form, we could also look at it in standard form. So um, when you have it in vertex form, to get it to standard form, then you expand the square because you just go by order of operations. So you're doing the square part first. And then you multiply everything, and this is what you get. And so um, we've rewritten it in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, because these are just like some constants um, that we don't know, but it's kind of just like abbreviated. So let's move into the student journal now. So we have uh, more examples for, or uh, an example for like what this means. Um, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. Uh, C is the y-intercept. And then a has the same meaning in vertex form and standard form. So if we're going to use this example, y equals 1 half x squared minus 2x minus 1 to kind of talk about these features. So the parabola opens up when a is greater than 0. So, oh, well, first let's identify a, b, and c. So we have a is 1 half. It's the coefficient in front of x squared. B is negative 2. And C is negative 1. So uh, maybe I should type that then because identifiers. B equals negative 2. C equals negative 1. So the parabola opens up when A is greater than 0 and opens down uh, when A is less than 0. So A is greater than 0. So this is going to open up. This is opening up. This is opening down. 
Um, the graph is narrower than the graph of the parent function x squared when the absolute value of a is greater than 1 and wider when the absolute value of a is less than 1. So the absolute value of 1 half is 1 half and less than 1, So which is less than 1. So it's going to be wider. Um, and the axis of symmetry, or where the vertex is, or where the uh, middle of the graph is, is at x equals negative b over 2a. So what will that look like here? Axis of symmetry, x equals negative b, so negative, ne negative 2, over 2 times 1 half. And let me go ahead and put that on a fraction. Nice. So I have negative negative 2 is positive 2. Divide it by 2 times 1 half is 1. So this equals 1. Or sorry, uh, 2. 2 divided by 2 is, or sorry, 2 divided by 1 is 2. So the x value, or the x of symmetry is x equals 2. And the vertex is when I take this value and I actually plug it in to get the y. So I will go ahead and do that. So my vertex is 2 something. I don't know yet, but I will find out. So 1 half times 2 squared minus 2. I'm just substituting x 2 for x uh, minus 1. So 2 squared is 4. Half of that is 2 minus 4 minus 1. 2 minus 4 is minus 1 is negative 3. And so my vertex is 2, negative 3. Um, the y-intercept is c, so the point 0, c is on the parabola. So in this case, 0, negative 1 is on the parabola. Uh, y-intercept, 0, negative 1. And so I have all these features. I know without even having put, you know, made one of these. I know that my vertex is at uh, 2, negative 3. I know that it's going through the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Um, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 1. So uh, once you've graphed the vertex, like I said before, if you want to make a t-chart, then you could go, um, you know, you could graph 2, 1, 0, or you could graph 2, 3, 4. But when you graph two points on one side of the vertex, then you can just copy uh, copy that idea to the other side because of symmetry. Um, minimum and maximum values. So uh, the y-coordinate of the vertex is the minimum value of the function. So really it just, it depends on if it's opening up or down. So if it's opening up, it's a minimum value because it's at the bottom. And if it's at the top, it's the maximum value. Um, do, pay, do, do notice that it says the y coordinate of the vertex is the minimum value. So after you plug in negative b over 2a, that will get you the y, uh, that will get you the minimum or maximum value. Um, let's look at the range. Okay, so um, let's see if I can graph this real quick and talk to you guys about. So we're just going to use the same exact example, uh, 1 half x squared minus 2x minus 1. So we're going to talk about this idea of decreasing and increasing. So this is uh, opening up. This graph is opening up. And the decreasing is means going down. And the increasing means going up. So it's decreasing to the left of the vertex or axis of symmetry, either or. And then it's increasing to the right of the axis of symmetry. So here, our uh, axis of symmetry is at x equals two. So this is just an example, and we're literally talking about the same one. Um, so decreasing to the left of negative two, increasing to the right of negative 2. So, or sorry, 
not negative two, two. So to the left of, of two, it's going down, and to the right of two, it's going up. Um, it, yeah, that's uh, how that works. Uh, the range is y is equal to or greater than the minimum value. So in this case, the minimum value is negative three. And so for this function specifically, we would say, oh, y is equal to or greater than negative three. Um, if it was facing this way, um, and I so I just changed the function by putting a negative in front. Um, but if it was facing downwards, then I would say, oh, the maximum is at one, and the range is y is equal to or less than this value. So the y, I mean, it's facing down, so all the y values are below, right? Like that should be pretty pretty intuitive. Like if it's if something is a maximum, in this case one is a maximum, then everything else has to be less than that by definition of like what max means. Um, okay, and finally, there's this example of uh, graphing a quadratic when it's in intercept form. So the form for intercept form is a times x minus p times x minus q. So my example is negative two times x plus three times x minus one. So since these are the x-intercepts and the way symmetry works is that the vertex is in the middle of the intercepts, then what I can do is I can find the middle by adding them together and dividing them by two. So what does this look like? X-intercepts at negative three, zero, and uh, one, zero. So to find the axis of symmetry, I'll say x equals negative three plus one divided by two. And that's how you, I mean, that's where your axis of symmetry is. And so w once you get your axis of symmetry, uh, which is negative one, x equals negative one, then to get your vertex, you just plug in negative one, and then you know you get your output, and whatever your output is, that's the y coordinate. Um, the parabola opens up when a is greater than zero, and opens down when a is less than zero. So negative two is less than zero, so it's going to open down. Yeah, I talked about vertex, axis of symmetry. Minimum, max, domain, and range, where the function is increasing and decreasing. Label the x-intercepts, vertex, and axis of symmetry. Yep. Cool. So let me know if you have any questions, um, and I'll clarify or answer.